Welcome, avid learner of linguistics. This is a little introduction to the interesting idea of discourses. Here we go. OK, let's just start with an example. If you're from an academic context, and I'll guess that you must be, dear viewer, because otherwise, why would you be bothered to watch this video? Anyway, this thing here says, read more books. Apparently, they're good for your soul. To get into the topic of discourses, the first thing we have to do here is ask, why? So, why should we read more books? Because, duh, is there a universal and absolute reason? But enough of that. Let's first tackle the definition. What is a discourse? First of all, the etymology of the word itself might be interesting, I figured. Discourse comes from Latin discursus and means the practice of running or walking about. Ah, uh, right. This is fairly vague. I thought this was a linguistics video, you might very well say. But before you go for a walk, Here's a definition by Michel Foucault, one of the founders of discourse linguistics. And Foucault says that discourses are practices which systematically form objects of which we speak. Yeah. Um, what looks and sounds like yet another vague brain fart is actually getting us closer to the concept. I personally found discourse as a concept needs quite some time and many different definitions to get one's head around. So I'd say that discourses are a linguistic representation of indefinite size, of ideas, which a speech community considers common sense. OK, with that said, let's look into how discourses work. Foucault says that we use language to form objects, or to be more precise, the concepts of objects. And it works like this. When people communicate, they express certain ideas, for instance, about books which others can agree to and share. And thus, by their phrasing and their use of language, people actually construct the concept of books. So far, so good. Now, we usually talk to more than just one person, and so good ideas, like about books, get shared across the speech community. The speakers use language in a very particular fashion in order to conceptualize books. Others then hear that and use these ideas in other conversations, and thus speakers create something that is called a discourse, which hovers above them like a cloud, you could say, and through time. And by packing the discourse's truth values into their language, and that has to do with language choice but also other stuff, they perpetuate the discourse. As we're looking at a book discourse, for an example, this discourse could have the following truths. Books are a reputable source of information. They should be treated with respect, so don't burn them or anything. And reading a lot is good. Also, this discourse says that reading makes you look sophisticated, which I think latches into yet another discourse, an intelligence discourse, one that holds that our society considers intelligence a good and worthwhile thing. Also, that shows that discourses aren't really clear-cut, but can be overlapping and connected. A question we need to ask here is, are the truth values of a discourse absolute? No. Definitely no. Discourses are arbitrary. They are made up, and you could invert them, and they could still work if people agree on the change. So, back to our initial picture. This picture, in fact, perpetuates a book discourse. It is meant to suggest that books are good and that you'll look clever and that society likes it. Also, what's with this caption? It's good for your soul. I'd like to see the evidence for that statement. But again, it's a clear sign that this discourse is arbitrary. And the funny thing is that we never really question these things or discourses in general. And what does it tell us if this discourse actually slips our attention? It shows how established books and reading are in our society. They have power because we don't question images like this one. A little afterthought for you. What does the N-word have to do with discourses? If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe. So, we shape objects by speaking about them. Yes, this is called performativity. 
does that completely bewilder you? Then click this. Bye. Have you clicked it? Is it even linked? I don't know. Depends if I find the time to make another video. If I have found it, this thingy here would be linked. Well anyway, just try to click it.